Ooh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Big Turn Talkers. I am Brock Gordon. I'm Tommy Haley, and I got freaked out for a second. I thought your mic cut out. And I'm Benjamin Duncan. Who we woke up from a deep sleep. Sorry, 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 Ben. You sound like very Eevee boy. On the bright side, Ben, tomorrow as we're recording this, you get to go to a cocky game. I won't be able to make that. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What what time do you get off work? Letting you guys know, I didn't get home from work today until 7.30. Okay, and you plan on doing the same There's thing tomorrow? Be probably the same thing again tomorrow because uh, we were, uh, uh, in, in light of what me and Tommy did this weekend, uh, we were cosplaying as government workers, standing around until someone else completes something until we start our job today. Okay. But here's the thing, as me and you have already talked about. It's there in independence. And it starts at 7.05, so I could send you your ticket, you could still make it. Just let me know, and I... I just... Tell me when and where I need to be, and I might be able to make it. 705 Cable Dahmer. Independence. <laughs> Do not wear blue. Any the other color is acceptable. There you go. Anyway, uh, yes, as been alluded to there, you two gentlemen had some fun this weekend, so I will... Let the floor be yours for that. All right, time's ours, Ben. So, Ben, Ben, what did we do this weekend? We went to Planet Anime Kansas City. Yes, indeed, we did. We had a good time. We had a bunch of stuff autographed for us. Spent too much money. Yeah, we kind of spent a little too much money at the con this weekend, but it's, it'll be worth it because I get paid this week. But, uh, Ben, would you like to say the, the haul that you got from the con for the past two days? Got a lot of art prints. I got a cool uh, tumbler cup. I got some stickers. Um, yeah. That's... Let me see. Is there anything, anything else? Any, anything else? Nothing autographed? autographed. That's, that's, that's pretty much that. Yep, yeah, pretty much the same for me. I got some cool, dope looking art. Had the man that plays Spider Man in the newest P uh, Spider Man game sign a dope ass print. And I had some other stuff get signed. And then, yeah, pretty much it. Pretty much the same thing. And I'm going to be honest. I'm oh glad we didn't record. There were some pretty sus things there, if you, if I would, if you would agree. Yeah. If Brock so, saw those nuts, but, uh, he would die on impact. Yes, yeah, so Brock would. The Brock's head would explode. Yeah. What such uh, things um, were this? Yeah. I mean, do you want to show him one? No. I. I mean, world. he's intrigued now, so <laughs> might as well show him. Or just talk about it here on the air. Brock, so um, you've probably seen it before, but like the anime mouse pads of uh, female characters, where um, the the cushioning for your wrist is a certain uh, yes, upper I, body. Part. Yes, a booby mouse pad. Yes, I I know just, those. Um, yes. Just think of uh, those, but for dude characters, and it's their butt. Okay. Do you have yeah. a picture? I do have a picture. Bro, these were so bad. 
I remember walking past them Certainly. Saturday, and I'm like, that's very cursed. Here, let me find it. First, I thought you were going to say it was their balls. I'm like, oh, Jesus. Oh, and uh, we saw Nate at the convention. Yes, I did hear about that. Yes, Nate, Nate, Nate was also there. Actually, he noticed me first on Saturday. Hmm. So it is the one in the very top right. I can kind of the one in the middle, switch. and then the one in the bottom. And then there's two right there, or there's three actually, and then there's one on the bottom. Hmm. And uh, I saw uh, anime Jesus at the convention, Brock. What? There was a guy. There was a guy cosplaying as Jesus at the convention. Good. Y'all need some Jesus. And then someone had, that. someone had Diego literally go Diego go on like a head on a spike. It's a little messed up, but okay. Oh, and Brock, you know the 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 big the funny hat, the women fear me, fish fear me hat. Yes. Uh, that made an appearance from uh, this dad that was walking around the convention. Good for him. There was also a guy from uh, Mississippi State that was there wearing a Mississippi State shirt. Bro, the the first the, the photo of you sending the guy with the hat, I deadass thought that was Jordan for a second. I was like, why didn't you fucking tell me Jordan was here? He wasn't. He was down in Rolla. I know, but it, uh, but like without the eyes, it kind of looks like Jordan. Well, kind of. Jordan looks like a very generic white male, so. But then Brock, that's why I said uh, you were confused by the picture of uh, the boulder. Yes. Oh, he's what never watched Avatar, that? so he doesn't know who that is. Yeah. But they did to him as Dwayne the Rock Johnson, which was pretty cool. And then, uh, probably, uh, lastly, the thing that you'd probably find pretty cool, um, would be that uh, I got my picture with uh, the coolest dude at the convention on Sunday. Okay. Because he, his shirt's literally me. <laughs> okay. But then, um, yeah, here's the here's the sticker that I got at the convention. You'll probably find it. Oh, funny. is it the fish sticker? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, but, but overall, yeah. there was like a lot of good artists there that like had their art for sale. Like all the art was really good. Some of it was kind of suspicious, but you know. And uh, Tommy had me seething on Saturday. Por qué no? Oh, oh, oh! Do you want to? Oh, you want to talk? <laughs> that, that, that's all. I'm, that's all I'm gonna say. All right, I'll explain my side of the story. Okay, so Saturday, I get there at noon. Ben was already. What time did you get there anyway? I probably got there around. 10.45. Alright, so I get there around noon because, one, I still was dealing with this dermatitis shit. I'm allergic reaction to, like, rebar soap that I was using on Friday. Or, it would be, it would have been a week since, so. Mm-hmm. Um, so I get there at noon, and I'm like, I'm good. Like, by the time I took, like, the medicine they gave me and all that, I'm feeling good. Um, my skin is not looking like I got stung by a thousand bees. And uh, so I'm like, man, who's there that I want to get an autograph signed? And then Christopher Sabbath is one of the English voice actors for Nora One Piece in Vegeta. Sabbath, sorry. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to get his autograph signed. At the time, I think you were still... I, that by the time I saw you, you were still in line for him. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. So I was talking to you, and I was like, you think if I can get, like, a thing for Zora, you can get it signed for me? And I, he was like, yeah. And then by the time I get the print and then come back, you were already a little deeper in line. Yeah. 
and then I think he had like a panel to go to at like what was it like one o'clock or something like that. Yeah, and so we both had to come back. So we both had to come back. You yeah, already had a sticky. spot in line. Yeah, because they gave me the sticky note saying I was number eight in line. So. You yeah, you had a sticky note. I didn't. I guess I have the photo here somewhere. So bro had to get to the back of the line. So bro had I had to get to the back of the line, and by the time he got back. <laughs> Um, shit, what, how do I explain this? So, I forget what time I got in line, but there was this Nico Robin cosplayer that was, I was standing right next to. She's really nice. She goes by Marge. Shout out Marge, by the way. She's the fucking GOAT. Vet school. She is, she is going to vet school and all that, and she decided to do the three-hour drive down to Kansas City for a Saturday only at Planet Comic Con. Planet Anime. And since she's going to vet school, autographs were like $60 a piece. And I was like... Tommy gave her money. You know what? I, I did the nice thing, and I paid for her autograph. I spent $142 for the both of us. And she was like, you don't have to do this. I'm like, well, I mean, to be fair... We were waiting three hours for this, so I might as well make it worth your while. That's her, by the way, I just sent in there, and that's both of us with our autographs. And so, yeah. God, you need your haircut. Yes, I know. Hold on. Uh, Shut up about that. But I could feel the jealousy from Ben. (laughs) I was literally in... What also sucked for her is she was wearing heels the entire time. She did not bring a spare pair of shoes at all. Oof. And I even told her, I'm like, you know, if you want to get out of line, I could save your spot for you. Oh, yeah, and that's what I sent him the next day, by the way. Okay. I'm just laughing at his ass because I know he's jealous as fuck. Oh, yeah, shout out, Marge. She's the fucking goat, and her friends are really cool as well. So, yeah, shout out, shout out, Marge. Shout out, Tommy, for being able to talk to the prettiest girl at the convention. Some other pretty girls there. Are you sure that they were girls? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I triple checked, so we're, we're good. Also, I know some people don't play... I know you don't play Legend of Zelda, but there was someone yesterday, Sunday, at the con dressed up as Link in the newest game with, like, the whole glowing right arm and everything. That was actually really badass. But yeah, overall, the experience for me and Ben for playing anime, 10 out of 10. We'll do it again next year. And... I'll remind Ben, was it Thursday? Tickets go on sale for Planet Comic Con Thursday. <laughs> We're getting ourselves the red pant, like whatever passes to get bypass dog, autograph lines. I don't think I'm getting a dog. Do you want to know how long I waited in line Saturday to get one autograph? How long? Dude, I, I waited in line for, for three people, and in total, it was probably six hours total for the three people I waited on. For me, it was three hours to get one autograph. Damn. It was the same thing for me, for Chris. That was on Saturday. And then Sunday, I had Yuri Lowenthal, who plays Spider-Man in the newest game, by the way. I'm gonna steal your Rinya for your foam, Spider-Man. For your foam, Spider-Man. And then I had Alex Lee, who is the voice actor for Zenny Sue and Demon Slayer. Never Sounds mind. Stuff. I'm gonna that steal one took James. longer than... That one took, the, the one for Alex took longer than Yuri. For some apparent reason. Then again, I got Yuri as like, as the con was like opening for that day. Like at 10 o'clock. So there was that. But overall, it was fun. We had a good time. And we spent way too much money. <laughs> well, I'd expect nothing less from y'all, to be honest. Luckily, 
both of us get paid this week, so. Yes. Well, there you go. I get paid this week, too. I just didn't spend it on dumb stuff like that, but you know. I mean, we didn't spend it on dumb stuff. We spent it on dumb, cool-looking stuff. Like, some of the artists there, like, their art was, like, actually really good. Like, really good. Yes. Okay. And then it, it was, honestly, it was just paying for those autographs was quite a lot. <laughs> but worth it. Yeah. Ben sounds very disheveled about that. Yeah. Ben is literally like, what's his face from Tiger King? He's like, I'm not going to financially recover from this. I'm never going to financially recover from this. I still never watched that, but um, it was cool to. Uh, I haven't either, Ben. I just know the quote. It's it was a cool to be able to uh, flex my pictures with uh, Chris and his autograph on the panel that I got him to sign, Tommy, for oh, with my yeah. friend Shane at work today. Because uh, Did you, oh, he's, I, all, can I he's also you caught up in One Piece, and I showed him that, and I'm like, ha ha! And he's like, no way, that's insane, dude, that's so cool. No way, bro, that dog. Here, I'll, I'll send you mine that I got signed, and then you can show him that too, and be like, ha ha ha. Mm-hmm. Where is it? Where is it? I'll send it later to you. Oh, but um, it was also very epic today because uh, Michaels was doing a forty uh, percent off all regular priced items in store, and so I got a, uh, I got all the frames I needed for my stuff that I got at the convention today. Or, yeah, I kind of need I got the convention it. over the weekend. Yeah, I kind of need to get some frames, but I need to get them measured to make sure I get the perfect, like, make sure they perfectly fit in there. Yeah, because I measured all of mine uh, last night. Yeah, but the the one that I got Yuri Lowenthal to sign, I'm getting that bitch custom frame. Oh, yeah. Like, it's it's a metal print, and he signed it in gray. Like, dude, that gray just makes it pop, bro. Bro. But speaking of which, you would think some celebrity, like, you always think, oh, celebrities are mean and all that. No, the three that I got them signed for, like, they were all so nice. Oh, yeah, all the people that we got our stuff signed by for for our stuff were so nice. Me with Yuri seems, Yuri seems like the guy that you can just, like, talk hours and hours or something you like, and you yeah. wouldn't be bored at all. But, like, talking with Chris... And Ryan and Kate, they're all such nice people. And it was super nice that uh, Kate said that there there needs to be more people in the world like me. Hmm. <laughs> huh, that's nice. Big W in chat. Uh, well, I'm glad that you two weeps had fun with that. And I'll never, because never we get hear to do that it from next a, year from at Planet Comic Con and then Knock Con in May. And then I'll never be. I'll never hear that from a woman outside of my family ever again. Nope. <laughs> the end. Uh, if you saw a very old man dressed as that fucking master Ry- 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 Reiki or whatever master the Reiki. fuck from Dragon Ball Z, uh, that was my you coworker. Yeah, that one. Uh, that's my coworker. I don't think we saw. I don't think we saw that. I saw someone dressed up as Whitebeard, but you yeah, guys have no idea. Whitebeard and the electric. Uh... Wheelchair. Yeah, there was a white. There, yeah, yeah, there was some guy on. in an electric scooter that was dressed up as white beard. It was pretty dope. Anyway, if you saw him, that was my coworker. So, but I'm glad you two weeps had fun. Then we went to Pigwitch after uh, the convention on Sunday. Very solid choice. Very solid choice, my friend. Yeah, I was like, I was like, was close to River Market. I was like, we're at River Market. I'm like, we're close to River Market. Piglet is right here. Let's just go there. It was pretty darn good. Piglet is always a very solid option. Yeah, so I had a cheesesteak. Mm. Good choice. Good choice. Their cheesesteaks are I incredible. Just had the norm- I, just had their, I just had their normal, like, pulled pork, whatever it was. That's what I usually then, uh, get. My little brother got, like, the spicy jalapeno version of what I got, so... Oof. I bet that toilet was fun afterwards. Uh, probably. I don't know. 
Anyway. Well, I'm glad you two had fun with that. And now it's time for something completely different. North Carolina lost to fucking one in five Virginia. Yes. Any given Saturday, right? She. There's a difference, though. I don't know about you, you though, Brock, but um, there was a, a, a team that got their first win on the season this weekend, too. Go on. Nevada went into San Diego State and upset San Diego State 6 nothing to win on Saturday night. This is the same Nevada that lost in a blowout fashion to FCS Idaho 33-6. to Yes. <laughs> By the way, an update on that uh, that Idaho team. They are now five and two on the year, as they lost a heartbreaker to Montana this week, twenty three twenty one. Ooh. Upset. Oh, also shout out to uh, Mississippi State's backup quarterback for uh, beating Arkansas this weekend. Yeah, shout out. That- Nobody likes the piggies. Hilarious. Nobody likes the piggies. So good. Arkansas only scored Arkansas has to win out to get, become bowl eligible. Did they really? <laughs> Brock, I was, I was, Brock, I was scared at the beginning of the season, but that uh, Black Friday games looking real nice and easy for us. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely not as nervous as I once was, however. Uh-oh. Okay, sure. so I know you guys don't I know you guys don't care, but uh, Arkansas their next game their next four games at Florida at they're home roast, against Auburn. In the hog. So they have a game at Florida Lost. on the fourth of November. Loss. And then they finish the season, and then they finish their next three games at home against Auburn. Loss. FIU, and then the uh, game against Mizzou. Loss. Ben, I am awaiting the results of November 4th before we announce what we're calling this, uh, the vlog for the Arkansas game. Yeah. I am. Take it, take it. Ooh, for the Black LSU Friday games right now, the low has $25. Yeah, so you can get them as low as $25 right now, Tommy. However, for where me and Ben are sitting, we're not getting them for $25. Yeah, lower, uh, LSU but... goose egg to Army this weekend. Tommy, do you guys hate America? Is that what it is? 62 to nothing. Do y'all hate America? Dude, it's, it's not Army's year. It's Air Force's year, bro. It's always Air Force's year. Air Force's year. year. It's, it's always Air Force's Air year. Force's what are you talking year, about? No. What are you talking about? It's always Air Force's year. Off we go into it's the gray blue yonder. Off we go into the unknown. I mean, they just... They, I mean... Casual all reminder. All in all, this was just a tune-up, this was just a tune-up game for the first... I mean, this was just a tune-up game for you-know-what. No, I don't. Are you referring to a certain team that's all you that you also won't the play Al- until November fourth? The LSU Alabama game. Yeah, that game is in Tuscaloosa this year. Yes, I know. Tennessee let us down this weekend. Penn State let us. down I don't down know. You're talking weekend. about Tennessee let us down. I wanted Alabama to win. Ew. You know why? Because if November 4th goes the way that I'm hoping November 4th will, I want to play them. You want to play Alabama? Yeah, fuck it. Why not? In the LTC championship game. Yeah, why not? Alabama's obviously shown that they're, you know, vulnerable. Plus, can you imagine if Mizzou was also to pull that off? 
be wins over a ranked no. or a rank a ranked uh, Tennessee, Kentucky, K State, Bama, and, and that team November fourth. Anyway. Oklahoma had a struggle win against UCF 31-29. It only was a win for Oklahoma because UCF failed the two-point conversion. So crazy. Not a great sign for the Sooners. Texas, same thing with them. They had a struggle win against Houston. It took a last Houston should have won that game. Houston, Houston should have won, won that game. Houston missed, missed holding call. Missed holding call. Missed several things. <clears throat> Thanks to Big Brother, you know. If you guys didn't know, the the head ref for uh, the Texas Houston game got his uh, law degree from Texas. How? Why do I find that not surprising? And I'm being dead serious with that right now. Nebraska picked up its fourth win of the year, beating Northwestern. Can't believe they're. If I actually won four games this year, holy shit. Well, you've also played, like, fucking no Also, one. gotta give props to Northwestern for doing the cow utter celebration. Definitely a top-tier celebration, not gonna lie. Remaining schedule for Nebraska. Purdue, Michigan State, Maryland, Wisconsin, Iowa. Honestly, they can get, they can get two wins out of that. Uh, no. State, they no, they can't. Football. No, they can't. They're going to find a way to I lose to Purdue. They're going to lose to Michigan State because it's in East Lansing. Is that game in East Lansing? It is in East Lansing. Michigan State is going to end up forfeiting the season, bro. Why is Michigan State going to start doing that? Why? Bro, after what they put up on the screen pregame this weekend? Oh, well. We'll get to that later. <laughs> Did you see that? That was kind of... Uh, yeah, I know. Uh... Uh, yeah. Crazy. Um, Ohio State skates past Penn State to win by 8, 20 to 12. Florida State dominates Duke in the second half to win at 38, 20. And then the game that I've been waiting for. <laughs> before, before the, Mr. Gordon, before you go ahead and say anything, I would like to say, I'm yours. <clears throat> number 14 versus number 18 in Los Angeles, California. The whole year we had heard how good this USC team was. How they're going to dominate the Pac-12. How they're going to represent the Pac-12 this year in the college football playoff. Oh, what a thing it is when you don't get to play easy competition. <laughs> I told you all at the beginning of the year that Utah would go in to Los Angeles and beat USC. And lo and behold, a Cam Rising list Utah goes in to the oldest college football stadium still in use in to date. And wins on a last second field goal. <laughs> I also like to, can I also, can, before, before you keep going, can I also like to say the writing was kind of on the wall when uh, the second half of the Colorado USC game started. Granted, it was Colorado, but I mean, you know, the, the, the writings were kind of starting to get there on the wall. But continue. <laughs> Two straight losses. And if you think that your schedule gets any easier, congrats, you have Cal your next game. However, following Cal, who do you have to play? Oh, it's only the best the Pac-12 has to offer. Number five, Washington. Number eight, Oregon. And number 23, UCLA. You will not remain ranked this year. You shouldn't have been ranked after this week. You should have been knocked out of the fucking rankings. The only reason you're still here 
It's because you had what people thought they thought would be the Heisman winner once again, but has proven that he is nothing more but a petulant little child who cannot handle adversity and crumbles under pressure. Congratulations, USC. You are less successful this year than the University of Missouri. You are less successful this year than the University of Air Force, and you are less successful this year than the University of Tulane. Sit in the corner where you belong and go back to irrelevance, the place that we had gladly kept you all this whole time without any issue. Goodbye, you have the same record as Kansas. James Madison's better. Also, I would like to point out that um, he's starting to look like Dak Prescott, by the way. Not surprised. And you know what's funny? His career does turn out like Dak Prescott. That would actually be hilarious and not bad. So now let's yeah, drop into the uh, jump into the rankings here. Say, Caleb, Caleb Williams has never won against Utah. Yeah, he's zero three in his career as well against Utah. Three times they have played. Let's jump in to the top 25, shall we? So, currently oh, sitting at the top that. is number one, Georgia, who had the bye this week. Michigan, who is number two. Ohio State, number three. Florida State, number four. Washington, five. Oklahoma, six. Texas, seven. Oregon, eight. Bama, nine. Penn State drops down to ten. Oregon State 11, Ole Miss 13, or Ole Miss 12, Utah 13, Notre Dame 14, LSU 15, 16, 17, North Carolina 18, Louisville 19, Air Force 20, Duke 20. Air Force is ranked 19? 19th. 19th. 20 Duke, 20 Duke, 21 Tennessee. 22, Tulane, 23, UCLA, 24, the petulant children of Los Angeles, and 25, making their debut in the rankings this year, the Dukes of James Madison. Yes, sir. JMU is a football school. Also, Ben, I have tragic news. What? Quincy. Did not defeat Indianapolis this week. No! Truman State, however, did pick up the victory. So they're now up to 21. However, with Indianapolis winning, they have clinched the Great Lakes Valley Conference Championship. A moment of silence. If you would, please, gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> so tragic. Wait, so do they not even have like a playoffs, or is it just whoever's the best record wins? Well, for the Great Lakes Valley. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's one conference. And it's football. Yeah. So Truman State won't win the Great Lakes Valley Conference. They may sneak into the playoffs, maybe, but it is um, unlikely. Unless a miracle happens. Uh, in other news, Pittsburgh State is still 8-0 on the year. Still undefeated. Good for them. Good for them. They have a one-game lead on Central Missouri for the... Uh, NAIA, or the MIIA division. So, there you go. Also, Harvard has lost. Breaking news, Harvard has lost. Oh my god. They lost to Princeton. Holy shit. And they play against Dartmouth, who are they current who they are currently tied for first place in the conference. They then do go to Columbia, then Penn, and then end the year in the Yale Bowl. Rough. 
Rutgers is bowl eligible. Rutgers is also bowl eligible. I forgot to throw that out there. Happy Italian noises. Go on. Give me some happy Italian noises, gentlemen. Meanwhile, in D3 land, um, I don't know who any of these schools are. No idea what's going on in D3. No idea. Um, Not pay a single John game. Hopkins is currently 7-0. and Good for them. Good for the doctors. There you go. That's your update for the D3. The, the Cavalry University Warriors men's soccer team has not won a game this year. I don't know who that is. The men's soccer team or the men's football team? The men's soccer team. Cavalry University is the religious college in Belton. Oh, okay. In the last two games the men's soccer team has played, they've been uh, outscored in both 14 to nothing. And this is soccer. Hmm. Interesting. Look, I'm mean, no expert on soccer, but that, 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 that does not sound like a good thing. No, that sounds terrible. Uh, in the FCS world, South Dakota State sits atop the power rankings. Montana State in two, Furman three, Incarnate Wood four... And Montana at five. Also, there's a lot of schools that are four and three and somehow ranked. Well, it's, uh, uh, respectfully, it's FCS. So. Yeah, but still. One of them, no disrespect. One of them's ranked as high of ranked as 17. At four and three? Yeah. The hell? There are two okay. teams that have two losses that are inside the top ten. What the heck is the FCS? Yes. Punching just, bags just, for just, the FBS. Well, no, you can't so say that because uh, sometimes you can't you can't say that because uh, uh, they they seem to lose. Some of these schools lose to the FCS quite a bit. For a certain team, for a certain a certain conference, it is just the cupcakes of cupcakes. Uh, in other news, uh, Northern Iowa, who has a, a friend of mine, Devin Rice, on uh, our foreign shout out Devin. Short out, shout out Dev. You play at Missouri State. November 11th. I'm going to see if I can't call out and go to that game to go see you play, bud. I love yous. You my bro. Uh, they are 4-3 and three on the year. Third in the Missouri Valley. Uh, they picked up a win over ranked North Dakota this week. Nice. Really nice. They have Illinois, Western Illinois, Missouri State, and end the year at home against North Dakota State. Uh, they can't catch the Coyotes or the Jackrabbits, but it looks like they can uh, make a make an interesting, compelling argument for uh, being, you know, eight and three at the end of the year. Plus, you know, okay. South Dakota slips up. They still got to play South Dakota State this year. We could, we could be talking about uh, some interesting stuff involving the involving the Panthers. Chaos. FCS chaos. In fact, hang on. Let me pull up what Mr. Devin has done so far this year for you. <clears throat> Devin has nine total tackles this year. Good for him. Yep. That's nine more it doesn't sound like he's getting a lot of playing time, though. Oh, no. He's starting. He's just at the end. Wow. Uh, the majority of the tackles on the team is from... Linebackers and defensive backs. Ah, uh, okay. I heard I heard the number and I was like, I thought he was starting. That's nine more tackles than the three of us combined have. 
Speak for yourself. Oh, what, this year? Yeah, sure, this year. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. This year, yes, but I was about to say, overall, speak for yourself, good sir. Talk about this year. This season, bro. All right, well, with that being said, it's time to go to Mr. Tommy for him to talk about his most impressive thing that he saw this week. Uh, well, I guess getting an autograph by Spider-Man himself, Yuri Lowenthal, did you like go up to him and thing. say, Although, "Did you go up to him and say, I'm here to run you for your phone, Spider Man?" No, I should have. That would have been funny. He probably would have gotten the joke. Maybe. I should have pointed at him like the Spider Man. Just be like. Spider-Man. Also, by the way, you know who Tony Todd is, right? No. Candyman. Candyman. Okay. Like the guy that plays the original Candyman. Okay. Holy fucking shit! He's tall. Yeah. I don't think you are. He is massive. Like, Yuri is as, like, as tall as me. He's like five. Nine. Dude, he looked so small. But yeah, Yuri Lowenthal for signing my Sasuke print. So dope. So dope. And a really nice guy. A true Spider Man, Peter Parker. Ben? Yeah, that's my most impressive. My most impressive goes to uh, voice actors' uh, stamina in their uh, dominant hand. Because uh, I don't know how many times those people have to sign their names on crap. But, like, just for example, Chris, he had to have signed at least, like, over a thousand things on Saturday alone. Well, well, all three of the people that the main cast of Spider-Man were there. Yeah. Like, Yuri, Tony, and I always forget Miles. The guy that does Miles. Yeah. But all of those people there, dude, their their hand stamina for signing stuff's got to be insane. And that's my most impressive. Okay. Okay. Um, my most impressive goes out to my nephew because I got to see him this week. Oh yeah, that's right. Happy birthday! I got to see both my nephews day. this week. Uh, but goes to my oldest nephew. Shout out to him because he scored a goal in a soccer game. Nice. So there you go. It's now time for most idiotic. Tommy. Um. I mean, you and me kind of know which one it is. <laughs> Could it be a school in Michigan? Uh, yeah, yeah. Goes out to the Michigan State Spartans. For putting up a picture of a famous Austrian painter. For uh, editor, go ahead and bleep this name out. No, hey, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know who you're talking about. Uh, magical editor. No, no, if you would so no, no. Here's out. what you do. You just say a famous Austrian painter. Famous Austrian painter redacted. A famous, a famous uh, Austrian painter who was very like pissed Washington off for redacted. being rejected by a British school. It was an Austrian uh, His art picture school, but okay. was shown. Uh, a rejected Austrian uh, artist you know, trying to go into a school whose name shall not be known yet if you would like to go see something about it it's vienna go to uh, vienna and orleans, school goes to new orleans, goes to new orleans louisiana for the museum that is there um for showing his picture and being like i don't know what even garnered this it was a but, pre-game yes. they do like they do like quizzes and stuff on the pre-game screen and they said they had no idea that that was going to be shown. Yeah, okay. Whatever. But yeah, Michigan State for showing that. Okay. Mr. Ben. Um, mine goes to all the basement gremlins that uh, me and Tommy saw at the convention. There's definitely some people that haven't bathed in weeks. There. Yeah, all right. That's that's a fucking understatement, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I 
told you all that was going to happen. I mean, for the most I, part... Well, yes, I know that. that. That's the, like, there's the, the, like, there's those, like, there's always going to be those people at those places. But it's just like, some of those people where it's just like, Jesus Christ, dude. Uh, yeah, no, I get, there, there were some people that was like, yeah, okay. But there were some other people that were like, dude, you, you gotta be, like, here's a bar of soap. Go to the fucking sink in the bathroom and use it. Alright. Oh, no, Ben left. No. Oh, he left. Oh. No. Thank God. He what back. happened? What happened? What happened? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Hear yes, you? we can hear you. Hear us. Okay. Well, it's my laptop. Oh. Dumbass. He was wanting attention. Mm. Okay. Well, uh, my most idiotic this week <clears throat> goes to none other than Charger fans. Because not, they don't no, exist. No, not Charger fans. Not Charger fans. This one Charger fan no, in particular. No, that's not the one I'm talking about. What are we talking about? I'm referring to a very specific Charger fan who is also a USC fan, who I went to high school and played football with. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to talk about the plant. Manny, you are my most idiotic of the week because I call you out in the group chat. You don't respond. Why? Because you know that I got your ass again. No. So, Manny, you're my most idiotic. Speaking of Chargers fans, can we just talk about this lady? You can, no. yes. Can we just agree that this lady is a plant? No. What are you knowing to, Ben? Did your cat unplug your laptop or something? What? Did your cat accidentally unplug your laptop or something? No, he was uh, messing with cords on the floor. Oh, okay. Oh, but, like, can we just, guys, can we just agree that this lady who is a quote-unquote Chargers fan. <laughs> it's just a straight-up plant by the NFL or by ESPN or all the major networks that broadcast NFL games. Or by the Chargers. Like, can, we just agree, can we just agree that this lady's a plant? I'm fine with admitting that. Ben? Like, she literally was at... Like, you see how she was reacting to... The game on Monday night against the Cowboys. The Monday night game against the Cowboys. And then this week, she's here in Kansas City with another person that shall not be named because we're not going to give her the attention that she deserves. Jackson Mahomes. Yes, Jackson Mahomes was also there. And uh, Brittany Mahomes. And Brittany Mahomes. The kids. And, uh, Donna Kelsey. I believe Donna Kelsey was also there. The kids. Uh, but um, she was at the game, and guess what she was wearing? She's wearing Charger stuff, obviously. She was also wearing a Buffalo Wild Wings hat, too. Like, they cannot make it more obvious that this is a plant for the NFL or for Buffalo Wild Wings or for whatever, but like to make it less obvious. Because guess what? The same lady that was in Charger stuff has been seen in Minnesota Vikings stuff before. So. Yep. So. i be fixing Mike. Okay. But yeah, I just wanted to get that off my chest because it's like, that was something we I forgot to talk about last week. But yeah. I thought it was so insignificant that we didn't need to. Yeah, but the fact that, like, she was at the game yesterday just, like, added, like, fuel to the fire. Yeah. Oh, well. Let's talk oh, about well, the NFL, well, shall well. we? 
Yes, let's do it. I almost lost a game. I almost lost to your grandpa in fantasy this week. Yeah. We had an actual good good NFL game this week, Brock. We had some good NFL games this week, and we had some good ref ball games. One mentioning, uh, one of these games being the, your uh, your favorite team. Being that on was the, the not a good game. A that was a losing. fucking ref ball game. I would also like, that was a ref ball game, by the way. And I would also like to say, for this on the record, Mr. Gordon, the Colts, what, what, obviously there were atrocities happening. There were two atrocities happening on the field. The first one was ref ball. Yeah. Yeah. The second one was, was those the... god awful uniforms the Colts. Only the helmets were the worst yesterday. part. The helmets were the worst part. The rest uh, of the uniform was nice. It was just the helmets. No, the whole ensemble was just not good. It was just not good. It was not good. Hmm. But we can all can, we all can agree. Miles Garrett is a force of nature. Who got away with several hands to the face. Okay, that's okay. okay, okay whatever. Still, though, man is an absolute force of nature. Freak of nature. Who jumped over the long snapper, which is a penalty. But what do I know? Mark, this is why we're sitting on our couches watching and not actually officiating. <laughs> yep. But to each their own. Either way, continue. I almost lost in fancy because the Ravens actually decided to show up for once in a game and the receivers did not drop past it. Isn't it crazy what happens when wide receivers catch footballs? Yeah. Oh, it's insane. It's also insane that your Saints lost at home. It was a Thursday night game. I could have cared less. Well, do you care about this? Like honestly, the Atlanta Falcons are now in first place in the NFC, in the NFC South. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a problem. You care now? A little bit. How does it feel to now be in the same boat that I am, that you're just praying for the sweet release of sucking and tanking till you finally build your team back up? I mean, ever since Brady retired, I've been waiting for it, so. Has it slowed down the Bucks now, has it? Well, that's what happens when you have Tom Brady at quarterback, so. Still, Baker Mayfield. Hasn't slowed point him down. A point still stands. A point still stands. You, sir, are in trouble. Because now the well, Falcons are getting good. What well, happens when an offensive coordinator is a fucking dumbass, too? Well, you know. So an eight-yard check down. Cool. Another eight-yard check down. Another eight-yard check down. Another eight-yard check down. He's not salty at all. No, oh, well, I gave it away. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay to be three and four. I'm also three and four. Colts and Saints, joined at the hip forever and ever. I we play this week, by the way. She's throwing that out there, too. Yeah, we do. You got Sunday off? No. Damn. Ben, how did your team do this week? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Too bad. We're talking about our teams right now. It's your uh, turn. Yeah, we got Share it. the we suffering were, with us. Uh, we were, me, Tommy, me and Tommy were talking. I, I, was tell, I told Tommy the score while we were at the convention, and he turns and looks at me like like he just heard the most confusing sentence in the world. <laughs> he was like, I was like, he literally told me that 
the Lions haven't scored at all. And I literally look back at him and I'm like, are you fucking joking right now? Hey, kid, you want to see a dead body? Honestly, just no, turn the Lions we, they, they, Ravens game on. Carl, why are his arms cut off? No now, people won't stop, now people won't stop. That now people won't shut up about the Ravens are going to the Super Bowl this year since they what beat. What are you talking them. about? Nobody's saying that. No one has no, said that. The media is. Who on earth has said that? The comment section on the sports app that I use. Who have you been watching is that has said that? Again, they're all the They're all, all, all a bunch of delinquents. <laughs> uh. Lions needed this. They'll have a fire under them now. <laughs> you hope. Any given Sunday, right? Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, after the Vikings just won, they're only a few games back now. It's so crazy. I mean, shoot, the Packers lost to the Broncos. Doesn't matter. You weren't playing against the Packers for first this year. You're playing against the Vikings, and the Vikings have figured it out. And uh, a, a quarterback who got sacked eight times by the Colorado School of Mines, and uh, had negative forty-eight rushing yards back in a game of this past December, uh, won a game for the Bears this weekend. I love how Is you're it me? It. Is it me or did uh, Chicago find their Brock Purdy? The only thing is, the guy didn't throw the ball once to Cole Komet. And I had him in my I other fantasy that. league, and he had zero I points. That, but, but still, did, did the, the Bears just find their Brock Purdy, though? No, no, they didn't. Yes, they're going to trade Justin oh, Fields this, now, please. Or is this just going to be like a one off thing? He's starting this weekend again. This is your new Mike White. See, I was thinking it was going to be a Mike White thing, but like I'm like, oh, this is probably like a Brock Purdy thing. Nope. This is your new Mike White. Huh. So, there you go. And though you are fans, that is the most we've talked about the NFL in months. Anywho, yeah. MLB playoffs. <laughs> there are no two better words in, in any sports than these two. Game seven. Game Game seven. Game fucking seven. I added the F, F word, though. Yep. It's glorious. Especially when it's a game seven and the Astros are getting their absolute ass pounded at home. It's crazy to think that, um, uh, Every game of that series was won by the away team. That is true. Also crazy to think that Houston was all time this like this season in the what's what's the name of Texas Rangers new stadium? Globe Life Park. The, so cold. Is it Globe Life Park? Okay, yes. I just brain farted on the name for a second. They are seven and one. They were seven and one this season. They only lost one game in that stadium. Yep. The trash cans looking in Houston and being like pathetic. <laughs> Indeed. But yeah. Um, speaking of which, shout out to Arizona for forcing a game seven in Philly. That game is going to be so good. I can't wait for Arizona to finally finish off the Phillies. Can't wait for them to win the World Series. I'd be fine Go Diamondbacks. 
Go Diamondbacks. They're the only team I want to win the World Series this year. Mm, I wouldn't be opposed to the Rangers. I don't want Texas to win anything. Why? No. Why? Arizona deserves this. Okay. I mean, the Rangers don't have a World Series title. The Diamondbacks do. If the, if the Phillies end up beating the Diamondbacks tomorrow, I'll be Ranger Nation. But we're going Diamondbacks right now. Okay. I would still like a reasoning why you don't want the Rangers to win. If, if it's Diamondbacks Rangers, I just want the Diamondbacks to win. Because okay. they have been in the pit of the NL West with the Rockies for years. To be fair, he, he, he did a very valid point. They have been in the, the basement of the NL West for I don't know how long now. Oh my god, Since Ben, I just looked at the predictions for the Mizzou-South Carolina game that we did last week. You were off by one point for each team. Oh. You said 35 to 13. Ben. Too good. I was off. I just picked 41 17. Whatever. Oh well. Oh well. Anyway. Uh, I have a little yeah. update about our baseball team. The Carolina Copperheads. Well, I thought you were about to say the Royals oh, yeah? finally decided where they're moving. No, 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 no. The Carolina Copperheads. So, if you missed the Twitch stream last week, uh, what is wrong with you? That was a great time. Great time had by all. We watched some... Oh, you're Carolina- right. You were streaming. Yeah. What? Yeah, I know, right? Uh, if you missed the stream, it's up on YouTube in its entirety, so you can watch it there. Your Carolina Copperheads got the number one seed in the AL, winning 111 games this year. Thoughts on that, gentlemen? I'm sorry, how, I'm sorry, how many games? 111. Wow, okay. Yes, sir. They met the yes, Texas sir. Rangers okay. in the ALDS. And won in five games, winning game five, eight to four. You can listen to each one of those games and the endings as I called them. I will be doing the next few tonight for the ALCS where they meet the Cleveland Spiders in the ALCS. Uh, By the way... Bryce Harper has become that dude in the playoffs so far this year. Same thing with Bobby Wood Jr. Bryce Harper I did that last year. What are you talking about? No, for our team. Oh, that's right. I was I was like, wait. And for Bobby Wood Jr. Like has as well as Bobby is tied for second most home runs in the postseason so far for the Copperheads. It's the guy can dream, right? Something like that. Also, the fact that the Copperheads switch off catchers depending on what uh, handed the pitcher is, whether it's JT Real Muto or Salvador Perez, is amazing. That is such a genius thing. That is so genius. I wish more. I more. really wish more MLB teams do that. What? So, the Copperheads are our, our team that we have, right, Ben? Yes. Our two catchers are JT Rilamuto and Salvador Perez. And if it's a righty yeah. that's pitching that day, JT Rilamuto will start. If it's a lefty, Salvador Perez will start. Mm. Nice. So what happens if they make a pitching change? They literally switch them out, make a defensive change. I think we have the most genius manager in MLB 
which if you remember from when we made this team, it's Tommy. Good job, Tommy. Yeah, good job, bud. No, I'm, I'm smart. I'm smart as fuck. I am a genius. I'm a genius. Oh no. Wait, no, you're a general manager. Manager was my grandpa. I am a genius. The Troy's Pink Harleys, the 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 coach, yes sir. There you go. That is your Carolina Copperheads update. All right, Ben. Let's hop into the DeLorean. Oh. For who he play for. Oh, okay. Uh, this week, we have an outfielder. Baseball yet again. Who played from 2005 to 2016. He was a third in Rookie of the Year voting in 2005 and won a Golden Glove in 2007. Um, he had a career war of 6.8 and he has played for a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 teams. You heard me right. Eight teams. Mm-hmm. And this is no other than... I can't pronounce his... I'm not going to pronounce his last name correctly, so I will post it in general for you guys. Okay. Jeff Francoeur? Well, Royals Braves. Jeff Francoeur? Jeff Brewers Braves. So, what Royals, that? Royals Brewers yeah, Braves... Royals. No, no, bro, no Brewers. Royals Braves. But you got Braves. You said no to the Braves? He, I said no Brewers, but you got Royals Braves. Royals Braves. How about the Texas Rangers? Yes. What year was he games, on the Rangers? 15 games with the Rangers. What year was that? That was... Um, part of 2000, the second half of 2010. Or, well, he played a, he played 124 games for a team you guys haven't said, and then he played 15 for the Texas Rangers. 2010. Was that the year they played the Cardinals in the World Series? 2010. Yes. Or was that an even year? No, you were right. No, because, okay, no, wait, because 2012 was the Giants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 2012, or 2010 was the Giants as well. But you guys got the Royals, Braves, and Rangers. You need five more. Jeffrey Kerr. Oakland. Oh, man. No. Mm. Am I really? No, oh, that's a good guess, though. How about Seattle? No. No. San Diego. Mm. Diamondbacks? Diamondbacks, no. San Diego, yes. He played 10 games for San Diego. <laughs> Why do Ten I remember games. him playing for the Padres? <laughs> I don't even remember him playing for the Padres. I, I did for whatever. 2014. Yeah. Um, the Looks like he probably took an injury in 2014. But uh, no Angels. Okay. And it won't, not the, I'm just going to say the Dodgers, even though it's probably not the Dodgers. No, no Dodgers. He did not. Okay, so that's pretty much all the West Coast teams done. How about the Colorado Rockies? No. No? Okay. You still need four. And you skip the West Coast team. Giants. Yes, he played 22 games for the Giants. Yep. Um, hmm. Yeah. 
Tampa Bay Rays? No. I could have sworn he played for Mm-mm. Tampa. No, you're thinking of Will Myers. Just see, but Frank Corb always seemed like the guy you would always think would definitely play for Tampa. No. I get why you're thinking uh, that, but no. Um. Damn. Uh. The Baltimore Orioles. No. No. The Mets. Um. Two years with the Mets. The. The Twins? No. No. How about the Tigers? No. No. The Spiders? No. No. The Cubs? No. The White Sox? No. No? Okay. How about the Marlins? Yes, he played 26 games for Miami. Damn, what year was that? That was... uh, He retired with the Marlins in 2016. Oh, okay. Second second half of 2016. Um, So how many more is that left? One more. One more. How about the Red Sox? No. No? Toronto. The Blue Jays? No. No. The Phillies. The Yankees? Yes, Brock got it. The Phillies. Brock got it. The Phillies? Yep. He was, he was with Philadelphia for the 2015 season. Oh, right. oh, you said it. You said it weird again. Philadelphia. You said, yeah, okay, there. There you go. You said Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Whatever. Because he was with Atlanta from 2005 to 2009 when they traded him halfway through the 2009 season to the Mets. And then he was with the Mets up until halfway through 2010. And then he got traded to the Rangers second half of 2010 or later 2010 before playoffs. Then he was with the Royals for 2011, 12. And the first half of 2013, before we traded him to the Giants. And then he was with the Padres for 2014 for 10 games until I guess he suffered an injury or something. Then he signed with Philadelphia in 2015. And then he went back to where he originally started in Atlanta in 2016. And then they traded him to Miami at the end of the season. And he, over his, the period of his career, he wore number 7, 12, 21, 23, 15, 3, 18, and 5. I could see those all being outfielder numbers. Okay, cool, you guys. Thanks. Awesome. All right. Wait, what was the number? He wore a lot of different ones. Yeah. What was his primary like number? 21, most of the time? 21 was his primary number. 7, 18, 5, 3. A lot of different ones. And that's been so that, Those are some outfield numbers right there. Yes. Next segment, please. Mm, okay. As I text my sister, who I realize is still on Discord for some reason. Reminder, she's a college student. All you do is to communicate with some other friends. Or knowing your sister doing something stupid and illegal. <laughs> well, my sister's doing something stupid and illegal, so... <laughs> anyway, it's now time to play... Who's your daddy? This week takes us up 
to Peoria, Illinois where we look at the AHL version of the Peoria Rivermen, who played from 2005 to 2013. Gentlemen, they only had one NHL team when they were in Peoria before they were bought by this other team and moved to another city. I need the team that was their parent when they were in Illinois. Who's the daddy? So what year was this from? 2005 to 2013. Okay, so this is when they were originally started in Peoria, Illinois. Well, they didn't originally start in Peoria. Technically, okay, this, well, no, well, this for, franchise for has been around this, since 1932 when they started as the Quebec Beavers. But for the sake of this segment, they started in Peoria. Yes. Then they got bought out and moved somewhere else. Bought by another an, another NHL team and got moved From out. From 2005 to 2013. Mm-hmm. Okay. So for nine years, okay. Brockton. Um. Hmm. What, Ben? I said Ottawa. Okay, Ben's going with Ottawa. I'm going to have to agree. I don't know why. I'm going to have to go with the Ottawa Senators as well. I was just thinking Rivermen, and I was thinking of people, and then I was like, there's a team that's a Senators. I'm going to go with Ottawa. And that's my reasoning. Dun, dun, dun. Let's go Blues. The St. Louis Blues. Oh. Where are the oh, daddy? Oh, okay. The team was eventually bought by. Any guesses? Any guesses? No idea. No, no idea. Minnesota. The Vancouver Canucks. And were moved to Utica, New York. So, there you go. That was who. Your daddy. It's now time for Ben's list. Oh boy. Okay, gentlemen. Oh boy. Let's see. Today is the the twenty third. Yes. Oh yeah, as of this recording, it is the twenty third. Dun, 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 dun. Yes, yes. Let me throw yes, my phone yes, real fast. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Oh, I would also like to state before we uh, go any farther. Uh, gentlemen, there is only one team in the NFL that has scored at least 20 points every game this season. Can you guess who it is? <laughs> you know because it's I sent the, it to you. It's the LeBron James. Yeah, it, yeah. That, I mean, that's one way to refer to them. The goat. I don't know. It's the coat. The Colts. The Colts. I know. <laughs> Let me pull up my list here. Toga, toga, As I was toga. sleeping, I did not make a list because I was expecting that we were just saying no go for the night. But I will just read off from my phone. Um, we had ended on the 16th. And the 16th was... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Monday, so I need to go back Doo -doo -doo -doo. to Tuesday. Doo -doo -doo -doo. First, we have Yep, okay, I'd already mentioned that earlier. Um 
Oh my God, Kirk Cousins just got a chain, a bedazzled top ten quarterback chain. From Jay, uh, from Jay Jetta. Yup. On uh, this past Wednesday, um, uh, the Jets traded McCole Hardman back to the Chiefs for literally a bag of Doritos. Boo. The Chiefs invited Frank Clark to Arrowhead for a physical, and uh, my boss is not a fan of Frank Clark, which is kind of funny. Uh, then, um, by the way, Creed is so back this week or this year, or especially this week. The Rangers saying that they're massive fans of Creed and Kirk Cousins winning tonight. Creed is so back. Uh, can't go any. Can't go any higher, right? Can you take me higher? Can you take me higher? The Detroit Tigers Dominican Complex was robbed days after a similar incident happened at the St. Louis Cardinals facility in the Dominican Republic. It's almost like if you have complexes there, it's gonna happen. Probably because it's not a safe country. Uh, Frank Clark, after he was released by the Broncos, said this on Twitter. Denver was solid. I love horses and mountains. Really? Holman was probably high as a kite tweeting that, bro. Probably. Yeah. Then, do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Uh, oh yeah, um, the Kansas City Current now have uh, the name of their uh, soccer stadium as it was revealed this past weekend, or like Friday or whatever. Do you guys want to know what the name of the stadium is? KCPO? Sure, why not? No. Oh, I don't know. The Kansas City Currents stadium name is CPKC Stadium. Boo! And the, the CP in CPKC stands for Canadian uh, Province. Oh and my god, Canadian, they're trying to take us it stands, over! It stands for Canadian Pacific Kansas City Railroad, basically. But, um, oh, okay. They should have called it Riverfront Stadium. But, uh, uh, I, at first, whenever I saw it, I'm like, why does it say CP in front of Kansas City? Communist Party. They're not hiding it anymore. I feel like uh, whoever came up with the name idea for the stadium needs to get uh, their internet search history looked into. Well, I mean, to be fair, they're putting a Jones Kansas City barbecue in the stadium, so it kind of balances itself out. Um, Xi Jinping is no longer hiding it. Kansas City will be the launch point. Um, um, uh, Martians have the death beam pointed at Earth. Who, who do you have taking the, the last three-point shot? Andre Iguodala has retired from the NBA after 19 seasons. Larry Bird. Oh, and uh, uh, the Kansas City Currents uh, Stadium, after it was named, it was announced that it is the first women's only stadium in the entire world. The first of its kind ever. Yeah, well, you know. How many seats does it have? Bro, I don't know. I don't like soccer. I'm not. I don't care. Well, I just said it because I feel like we're gonna get announced here in a few years that uh, UMKC is bringing back their football team, and they're gonna be playing there. I don't know. I don't think it might. Ooh, it might be big enough to have a football for a football team to play so there. It's CPKC Stadium. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, 11,500. Is that the max? Is that what 
a projected stadium seating. That's what they're years. that's what they're building it for. That's enough for a D two or FCS college stadium. I'm just saying. I'm um, just saying. The University of Michigan is uh, being investigated by the NCAA for alleged sign stealing rule violations over the past three years. Wait, 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 wait. And, uh, Hang on, I got something for this. And then uh, Michigan has suspended the staff to amid the pro for alleged sign stealing. And no, we can't hear anything. Could you all hear that? No. Oh, well, I was banging a trash can. Um, here's a, a picture of, um, SEC basketball, Brock, if I, I would like to hear your opinion on. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What the fuck? <laughs> what am I looking at, bro? You're looking at a, a, a Tennessee capybara dunking on a, a Florida gator and an Alabama elephant. But why the capybara? Because capybaras go hard. And why does this look like it's being played in Neyland Stadium? Very valid point. Capybaras do indeed go astronomically hard. But why does it look like this game's being played in Neyland Stadium? Because why not? Outdoor basketball game. That would go crazy hard. Um... Oh, uh, a new favorite uh, meme of mine that I this is this is not sports for my list, but just a new favorite meme that I found the other day. <laughs> yes. Whoa! What the fuck is that watermark in the bottom? I found it on oh my God, Google Images, bro. It's forbidden. Oh, of course. Yeah, that's that, that sounds surprising. It's forbidden. The, is this the forbidden watermark? Uh, I don't know about forbidden, but I still have I still see that watermark all the time. I broke that, but not okay. I see it all the time. Yeah, uh, Mr. part of the ship, uh, part of the crew. The is always get rid of the damn watermark. Um, Minnesota beat Iowa this weekend, twelve to ten. Iowa only scoring ten points. Tommy point tracker. I don't know. I can't count. Their offense, their offensive coordinator is going to get fired. He's um, got four games left. Bryce Harper became the first Phillies player to steal home in the playoffs. During uh, game five of the NLCS. Yeah, but how many SEC championships does he have? Don't care, didn't ask. I don't care. Who gives a shit? The I mean, Michigan hang on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I will say this in defense of Iowa. Here's how many... Here's who they played the last four weeks. Northwestern, Rutgers, Illinois, and Nebraska. So if they go off for like um, a combined 150 points in those four games, they can do it. Uh, Colorado beat Texas 87-78 in a secret basketball scrimmage the other day. Uh, SMU beat K-State in a secret basketball scrimmage 83-72. Mm. Uh, yeah, Washington almost lost to uh, Arizona State. Yep, that was. I, I was wa- I was paying attention to the stats before the pick six happened, and uh, yeah, because that was a uh, mid fourth quarter until that had happened. So um, yeah, because Arizona State was leading that entire game, going up until the mid fourth quarter. Um, the. Las Vegas Golden Knights are the first defending cup champions to start uh, 6-0-0 on the season. Yeah. NHL. On the bright side, since you talked about the NHL, 
I'd like to gloat about the Nashville Predators real quick. They're three and three on the year, Tommy. They're coming back. Uh, We're coming back. Here are some pictures Once after the um, two real big games. We beat the Sharks and the Rangers. We got the Canucks tomorrow night. Here are some pictures of uh, after the uh, during and after the uh, Tennessee Alabama game this weekend. Oh boy. Okay then. Uh, I'm not smoking cigars because Alabama won. Those are my friends that go to Alabama. Now, November 4th, I'll smoke them and I'll call in. Um, then uh, we have this meme. You might have seen it already, Brock. It's been doing the rounds over the weekend on social media. It's hilarious. Uh, man, that's been going around <laughs> too long. It's been going around longer than this uh, he weekend. Showed me that, uh, he, showed me that, he showed me that yesterday, and I was just like, that's funny. That has been an um, ongoing war on go. the Forbidden app. Here, uh, Brock, here's a good one. Um, you are a brand new head coach. You are giving an Oklahoma team that just won the Sugar Bowl. You start with a quarterback who has been top four in Heisman votes the previous two years. This same quarterback will say his backup is better than him and is correct. You'll then receive a quarterback that led Alabama to the national title game and two number one recruiting class quarterbacks. Your challenge, go win a playoff game. Okay. Also, side note, impossible. Yeah. Um... I will run the ball every play. In good news, uh, Texas quarterback Quinn Ewers is expected to to miss some time after suffering a grade two AC joint sprain in his right shoulder. How the fuck is that uh, good news, my guy? Horns down. Um, okay, but there's a difference between we'll horns we'll down the, uh, and the uh, Manning play. Bro, okay, but still, there's a difference between horns down and also being happy that a dude's injured. What the fuck is wrong with you? Uh, Patriots upset the Bills. And Bill Belichick got his 300th career win. Boo. Uh, the NFL sent a memo out to teams warning them against pregame and in-game fighting. Boo. What about post-game Boo. fighting? I mean, like, that... We're not post game. Yeah, they didn't say anything. They didn't about say post game. So those idiots can punch each other without helmets on. Finally, I want to see massive brawls at NFL games, like we do in hockey. Yeah, uh, Arkansas has. Yeah, fired too bad we'll never see that. Never happen. Arkansas fired their offensive coordinator, and their wide receiver coach will be the new play caller. Yeah, they need to do more than that. Um, if you guys didn't know, uh, Christian McCaffrey has a younger brother. Okay. And, uh, he is, he is a wide receiver for Rice, and, uh, he is in, uh, like the top 20 for, uh, all college wide receiver stats. He's a wide receiver for food? I mean, have you, I mean, have you seen that family? I'm pretty sure her mom, I'm pretty sure their mom was an Olympic runner. Well, well, here you go, Tommy. Uh, McCaffrey's father, Ed McCaffrey, played wide receiver for the Giants, the 49ers, and Broncos, and was formerly the head coach for Northern Colorado. Uh, Christian McCaffrey is currently running back for the 49ers. Another brother, Max, played wide receiver at Duke and in the NFL for several teams, and his brother, Dylan, is the starting quarterback at Northern Colorado after beginning his college career at Michigan. His maternal grandfather, Dave Sim, was an athlete and won a silver medal in the 100 meters at the 1960 Olympic Games. So their family is stacked. Their family is that that family is absolutely insane. Um, Eagles wide receiver AJ Brown has more receiving yards this season, 809, than all Titans wide receivers have combined, 789. 
Yeah, well, they have the same amount of Super Bowls, so. Um, ooh, uh, just some stats on uh, Josh McDaniels' time uh, as the head coach of the Raiders. Um, he uh, lost to the Colts in Jeff Saturday's coaching debut. Bitch. He lost to the Rams despite starting quarterback Baker Mayfield being with the team for just two days. Bitch. And lost to the 1-5 Bears and an undrafted free agent quarterback making his first career start. Suck that tag of dick, bitch. And uh, we are on the, we are now on the uh, the Sam Howell uh, train of the pursuit of NFL history. If you guys didn't know, I, I um, did not. Uh, welcome back to your weekly update on Sam Howell's pursuit of history. After taking another six sacks against the, a Giants defense that entered the week with a mere five on the season, the Commanders quarterback finds himself on pace for 97 sacks on the year. That'd be 21 more than the current record holder David Carr took back in 2002. Well, I think Taylor Heineke could have been the savior for him. Yeah. Um. Um, the uh, all the other NFL teams except the Eagles want to uh, ban uh, the brotherly shove. Boo. That's so soft. That is so soft. That is like the biggest. That is like the purest football moves of football moves. To, oh, yeah. Once again, I will say this again: the teams that in teams and fans that complain about the brotherly shove get fucking better. Yeah. Um, I'll just say this. Chiefs You're a bunch of bitches. That's hard-nosed old-school football right there. Buddy, you're softer than a than feathered and pillowed, my guy. Buddy, you're softer than dog shit. Baby shit, even. You're just soft as fuck. I don't know why I'm turning Canadian, eh? But I am. You're fucking 10-ply, bud. Like Kenny, eh? You're, you're fucking 10-ply, bud. Uh, but um, moving on, uh, Chiefs linebacker Nick Bolton is expected to be out for two months after having surgery on his do- dislocated wrist. No! I'm sorry, Brock. He was our uh, savior. Ooh. News, news for Tommy. Um, in Louisiana today, just for uh, Tommy, there was a uh, large pileup along uh, I fifty five in Louisiana amid heavy smoke and fog. That does not sound surprising. Wait for smoke and fog. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For smoke. Yeah, smoke. there's been a, a fire that was started by a lightning strike uh, back in July, and that uh, fire has still not been contained. But- and. Uh, if you want to know why, it's that's because, not surprising. Uh, I don't find that surprising at all. If you want to know why that fire still hasn't been contained, is because uh, it's on a piece of land that's surrounded by water, and the fire department can't get there. <laughs> um, the your Milwaukee state's Bucks weird, Tommy. Sign. Yeah, your state's like really uh, weird. The Milwaukee Bucks signed Giannis to a mammoth three-year extension worth $186 million. Uh, that was also per our own Brock Gordon. So. Oh, okay. Mention that. Um, I had the scoop on that. Chiefs wide receiver Justin Ross was arrested on a criminal damage worth over $25,000. What? Chiefs player getting arrested? Shocker. Um, the Rangers stomped the Astros tonight to clinch the first their first AL pennant since 2011. And uh, Aroldis, or is it? Aroldis. Aroldis Garcia. Garcia won ALCS MVP. 
I thought he was going with Aroldis Chapman, who got the save. Um, the Eagles. It was technically a no save situation. They somehow gave it to him, though. I don't know how. It's finally the start of uh, the NFL trade deadline as the trade deadline ends on uh, 3 p.m. Central Time, Halloween, this next Tuesday. And uh, the Titans have traded two time Pro Bowl safety Kevin Byard to the Eagles for 62 cents. 62 yeah. cents! And uh, why was there echo on that? I don't know. Anyways, no active quarterback has more losses than Justin Herbert since he was drafted in 2020. Jesus. At 28 losses. Jesus. 20. I feel sorry for my guy. Um, the NFL will follow up with the Falcons over failure to disclose the Bijan Robinson illness. And, well, I mean, it's uh, eight, drafting, so, you know. And uh, DraftKings is paying back everyone who put bets on uh, Bijan over the weekend. Okay. Then uh, Chris Olave was arrested for going 35 over the speed limit today. Tommy! What? Why didn't you go Excuse down there me? and stop him? I don't... I don't leave until like the twenty second of November. Still, you should have stopped him. And uh, that's all I have on my list for today, gentlemen. All right. Well, it's time to play most expensive, <clears throat> gentlemen. There are four NCAA games where the cheapest ticket is over a hundred dollars. I need the three most expensive. You will not get one of these. Not get one of them. You will not get one of them. Because all the games, because like all the games that are happening, are not this week. Or well, I guess, yeah, no, the, all the good games are not happening this weekend. They're all next weekend. No, there's still some good ones this weekend. Um, Oregon, Utah. Oregon, Utah, number two, one fifty six. Really? Didn't make my list. Holy shit, they actually... Oh my god, wow, that's probably the cheapest I've ever seen tickets go for that game. Yep. Um, I need a guess, gentlemen. Come on, two more. Give me a second. What were the, what were the, wait, what did you already get? Oregon, Colorado, Utah. Colorado, UCLA. Colorado, UCLA, number three. I need the most expensive. Oh, and, the one, in the world's ball, that's and the one that you will not get. Is it two unranked teams? No, they're ranked. Even they're ranked. Hmm. James Madison, Old Dominion. No. North Carolina. You can Louisville? Nope. How about Ohio State, Wisconsin? Nope. North Carolina, Georgia Tech. Nope. Give Air up. Air Force, Colorado State. Nope. You give up. I what give up. What is, what, is it? It? what is it? South Dakota State versus South Dakota, $171. Oh, Where's that game? Oh, an FCS game? That is still the NCAA. Gentlemen, there are seven NFL games with the cheapest ticket. Over $100. I need the top three. For next week? For this yeah. upcoming week, yeah. Uh, Vikings, Packers. Uh, no. Rams, Cowboys. 
No. Hold on. Is that game in L.A. or is that game in Dallas? It's in Dallas. Dallas. Okay. Then it, it, would be the op- it would have been expensive. Wait, who did you say, Ben? Bengals 49ers. It's That's a pick right now. Not this week. Um, yeah, it is. No, he's right. It is this week. It's a 325 game. Night game this week. Um. Oh yeah, there is. Um. Uh, what the hell? How did I get that there then? Oh, that's huh? why. Durr, yes, Bengals Forty Nine ers. Yes. Which one is it? Uh, Bengals Forty Nine ers. Yes, that's on the list. Jet, Jets and Giants. That is the most expensive. Two ten. Looking for the other most expensive. Bears Chargers. No. Raiders Lions. Are it is indeed Lions. Raiders Lions. Yes, I messed up. I had some messed up list. I don't know what I did. Yes, Raiders Lions is on that list. So there you go. Most expensive. Can you tell us like where on the list? Raiders Lions was number two. And then Bengals 49ers, number one? Number two. Or three. Most expensive was Battle of New York. Was Jets Giants. We got, there we go. We got number, we got all three. There yeah, like I said, you already got all three. Anyway. It's now time for Ben's list, or, you know, his, his fucking three things. Jesus. Brain, no work. Right, three, three things. Number one on my list of three things. Ben, or Tommy, do you got the whip crack? Uh, give me a second, yeah. Uh, okay. Shout out to the uh, Kansas City streetcar because uh, me and Tommy saw it. Um, it's a uh, oh yeah, <laughs> the Kansas City streetcar right now, right, Tommy? Yep. What were your so it's Barbie on? themed right now? I guess they don't have the wraps in for whatever is next. And guess what it says on there? Hmm. Kansas City. Yes. Yes. Kansas City. It says Kansas City. Also, at Planet Anime, there was a booth that was selling stickers that said, I am Kenuff. And you didn't get yeah. them? Yeah, unfortunately, we did not get them. In hindsight, we should have. What is wrong with you? You imbecile. Funny enough, there was a group of people, there was a group of people dressed up as, like, Barbie and Ken. Barbie and Ken's. At the convention, that was pretty cool. I don't care about that. I care about you coming they back. They were dressed up as Ken! What do you mean? I care about you all coming back with the Knuff. Because are you Knuff? Yes, I am Knuff. Are, ben, are you Knuff? Yes. I'm Benuff. You're Benuff. Moving on, number two on my list of three things. Tony. Oh shit! Sorry, sorry. <laughs> a um study from uh Texas A and M just came out today, and it was that a uh, a connection with nature has been linked to longer and healthier lives. No, really. Never would have guessed. So, what you're telling me is we got to all go touch grass. Yes. Go touch grass. Studies show that I work outside 8 to 5 every day. Studies show that green spaces like parks or trails in urban environments can improve mental and physical health in powerful ways. And... Rock the um, first place when we go to Omaha next year, we're going to the fucking Waterfly Garden next year. First thing we're doing at the zoo. But the green yeah, space. The, this study is really cool, and I'll send the link. You guys can read it. But um, it's a very nice little uh, article that they did. Oh, nice. That was pretty neat. And then um, number three on my list of three things. <laughs> Shout out 
shout out to all of our uh, veterans out there. But uh, number three on my list, uh, I found out that a a uh, a Maine based uh, group is providing free nature outings to disabled veterans. Nice. Uh, Good. Nice. Meat Mountain Outdoors is providing hunting and fishing trips to veterans with physical and or psychological injuries. And so, uh, it's a, this is a nice little article too, but, um, good, good on a Mead Mountain for, uh, doing stuff for our veterans. We support. Mm -hmm. Shout out the, the veteran that me and Tommy saw, or at least I saw him, but he was wearing his veteran hat at the convention this weekend. Oh, I never noticed that. He was standing in line for autographs with me or a couple people in front of me. All right, gentlemen, I have a new one for you for most expensive ticket. There is one NHL game this week that has the most expensive ticket over $100. I just need one team that's involved. I don't need you to try and guess who's playing. Blackhawks. Tommy, your guess? The Maple Leafs. It is Calgary versus Edmonton, $197 for a Sunday matchup. At 6 p.m. local time here in Kansas City. This weekend? This weekend. It's well, a battle for Alberta. The, uh, we have the update on the, the Chris Olave situation. Breaking news. New Orleans Saints, New Orleans Saints wide receiver Chris Olave was arrested Monday night in Kenner, Louisiana. Do you know where that is, Tommy? Fucking course he was arrested in Kenner. Of course. Please describe Kenner for all of us who are not from... Where the airport is. Okay, thank you. Mm. Uh, For reckless operation of a motor vehicle, police confirmed to NFL media. Olave was driving 70 miles per hour in a 35 mile per hour zone, police said. The 23-year-old will be released from Kenner Jail after his paperwork is processed. The Saints said they were aware of Olave's arrest. Uh, Yada yada, the Saints will be on the road to take on the Colts on Sunday. So no Chris Olave. What happened when Derek Carr's your quarterback? No Chris Olave this week. Tommy, how do you feel about that? I guess this is what happened when Derek Carr is your quarterback. Sure, blame Derek Carr. Just don't. Don't don't blame the fact Stuff. that he Stuff. had no control over. Stuff. Uh, is this is this the uh, what was uh, that joke? Just kind of went completely over. No, I know, way. I know, I know what the joke was. I just uh, ignored it for obvious reasons. Anyway, is this the Shahid Shafid uh, blow up uh, breakout game? <laughs> no, that'd be funny if it was. It's That'd be cool if it is. Because he's, he's been doing decent. There's Rashid Shaheed. That's the thing, though. Yeah, he has been doing good. Dude, the guy's 25, really. I did not realize that. Tommy, are you ready to get your claps or your cheeks clapped this week? In what way? Well, I mean, the Colts are just going to... Colts are just going to end up beating the shit out of them. No, it won't even be competitive. (laughs) It's now... Time... For football trivia. Gentlemen, if you remember, we've been doing this the last... We started this last week. And yes, Ben. Yes, we can tell. We did this last week. It's best two out of three between you two gentlemen. Uh, currently, the all-time standings is Tommy one, Ben nothing. So, gentlemen, are you ready for week two of this? Yes. Yes. All right. 
Question number one. Jerome Bettis went out in style, ending his playing career with a Super Bowl win with the Steelers in his hometown. Where was the game played? A. Ford Field. B. Dolphin Stadium. Or C. Qualcomm Stadium. Remember, Tommy, your name. Can you repeat? Can you repeat? Remember, Tommy, you repeat your question. Hang on. Tommy, remember, your buzzer noise is. And Ben, your buzzer noise is. I'm kidding, it's. Once again, Jerome Bettis went out in style, ending his playing career with a Super Bowl win with the Steelers in his hometown. In Detroit. Tommy is on the board with one. John Elway's. You said, I heard Jerome Bettis. John Elway's NFL playing career came to an end after Denver Super Bowl victory over what team? A, the Green Bay Packers, B, the Atlanta Falcons, or C, the Washington Redacteds? Tommy. Packers. Ben has a chance to steal. Fuck. What? It's... Uh, not the Falcons. It's the other team, you said. It is the Atlanta Falcons. Bruh. Third question. In his um, final... This one was for John, was for the Packers. In his final NFL game, what Packers kicker kicked four field goals in their Super Bowl two win over the Raiders? I'm going to go to a different one. That's too hard for y'all. That is a that is a niche one right there. I want to get yeah, that. It is good lord. Let's see. All right, here we go. What Titan came up a yard short against the Rams in the Super Bowl, failing to reach the end zone as time ran out, leaving Tennessee with a heartbreaking twenty three sixteen loss. A. Kevin Dyson. B. Frank Wycheck. Or C, Derek Mason. You know the answer. Well, you got to press your button. What? I don't even know what my button is. Okay, was. that whatever. Um, what? What's the answer, bro? There you go. What's Dyson. The that is correct. We go to sudden death. The final game for this Raiders Hall of Fame linebacker was played in a 38-9 to Super Bowl drubbing of the redacted. Who is he? A, Ken Hendrick, or Ted Hendricks. B, Howie Long, or C, Gene Upshaw? Tommy. Howie Long. Ben with a chance to steal and tie the all-time series. What were the other two options again? Ted Hendricks and Gene Upshaw. We're going Hendricks. Ben has tied the series at one apiece. Ben, because you win, you get to give us the final word as we leave today after picks. So keep that in mind that you will have final word. Anyway, gentlemen, it's now time for picks this week. We have an interesting lineup of picks. As uh, well, you know, it's a good mesh. We got some. We got a hockey game in there. We got two NFL games, as well as our sleep. <laughs> huh? What was that, Tommy? Hockey. Hockey. Yes, hockey. We're back Hops. to that again. We're back to that again. Starting us off, it's the biggest game that's being played this week. Number two, or number one, South Dakota State travels to their in-state rival, South Dakota. It's a pick 'em, gentlemen. Do you have the Jackrabbits or the Coyotes? Who's the playing? South Dakota State versus South Dakota. 7-0 and South Dakota State versus 6-1 and South Dakota. I'll go South Dakota State. Ben? Jackrabbits. I think Big Brother's going to get their revenge, finally. They are going to be the ones that defeat South Dakota State. 
Next game, Montana State travels to play in the Kibbe Dome against the Vandals of Idaho. Winner takes hold of the Big Sky Conference. Give me Idaho. You said Montana State? Mm-hmm. The Bobcats, yes. I'm, we're going with the Bobcats just because uh, one of the guys at my work has a, a Bobcats sweatshirt he got for fun. I have to agree with Ben. I think this is going to be Montana State's game because they've had nothing but dominance the last few years in the conference. I don't think that ends anytime soon. It's the world's largest cocktail party down in Jacksonville. Uga is 14 point, 14 and a half point favorites over Florida. You got the Gators or the Bodogs? Uh, Georgia. Wolf, wolf, wolf. Dog goes wolf. November 4th. That's all I'm going to say. November 4th. You're telling yourself that, pal. Hmm? I mean, it's a game. That's why I say it. Exactly. Yeah. A game you're not going to win. November 4th. Oregon travels to Salt Lake City to take on the Utes. The Ducks are seven-point favorites. Where's this game playing? Salt Lake City. Oh, fucking give me Utah, then. I also think the Utes are going to win, so congratulations, Oregon, on your victory. It depend. It also massively depends on what Oregon wears. Okay. Duke travels to the Louisville to take on the Cardinals. The Cardinals are four-point favorites on the Blue Devils. What are the two teams again? Duke and Louisville. Louisville, four-point favorites. No, Duke. Duke. Louisville. The way that you say that pains me, Tommy. Pains me a lot. It's Louisville. What, Louisville? It's Louisville. Tennessee travels to Kroger Field to take on Kentucky. The Volunteers are three-and-a-half-point favorites on the Wildcats. Tennessee and Kentucky. I'll, I'll take Tennessee. Ben? Sorry, what were the two teams again? Tennessee, Kentucky. Oh, Tennessee. Surprised Ben didn't start singing the song. But I also have Tennessee coming back this week. UNLV, who is bowl eligible and within striking distance of playing in the Mountain West Conference Championship game, travels to Fresno, California to take on the Fresno State Bulldogs. The Bulldogs are nine-point favorites on the Running Rebels. UNLV, Fresno's not the best this year after their quarterback went to the NFL. They are still 6-1. <laughs> and one. I'll take UNLV as well. Because the demon is the coach there, I'm taking Fresno State. I review. I refuse to root for the demon. Yes. Georgia State and Georgia Southern six and one Georgia State versus five and two Georgia Southern. The Eagles are one and a half point favorites against the Panthers. Panthers. Okay, you're going with Georgia State. Going with the other Georgia team. Georgia Southern. I am going with the Panthers. I think they might win the Sun Belt this year. Maction. Six and two. Miami of Ohio. Takes on six and two, Ohio. It is a pick'em. A pick'em in Athens, Ohio. Bobcats, Redhawks. 
Jeez. Mm, well, I want both these teams to win. Sucks we had to pick a winner in this game. Yep. Miami. Mm. I'm going to go with the Bobcats. O-H-I-O. In the NFL, Atlanta travels to Nashville to take on the Titans. The Falcons are two-point favorites. Falcons. There's word that uh, the Titans might be uh, trading Derrick Henry to the uh, Eagles. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, just aren't that good. It, it's just uh, <laughs> rumbling. In, uh, no, neither of these teams are good. I mean, one's leading their division. I mean, have you seen how dumb their coach is? Doesn't matter. One team's leading their division. You gotta make a pick here, Tommy. Oh, that's high. Tommy has a Titans, got it. New Orleans travels to Indianapolis. It is a pick 'em. How is this game a pick 'em right now? Because we both have the same exact I'm record. I'm taking the Colts. What the hell? Wow. Ben. I said Colts. Okay, well. I can't wait for the refs to fuck us again. And Finalamar, the Calgary Flames travel across the great province of Alberta to take on the Oilers of Edmonton. It is a pick'em. Oilers. Uh, Do you still love McJesus? He does not. I hate McJesus. Oh, Connor? I hate McJesus, but I think he's going to win. So, Connor? Yep. I'll go with the Oilers. Why not? <laughs> okay. Well, I just remembered there's one other that we have to pick for this week. This week. As the Wichita Thunder come to Kansas City to take on the Valiant Mavericks, who are celebrating their anniversary of being in Kansas City. It is a pick 'em, gentlemen. Will you pick Give the Mavs? Will you pick the Let's most hated Mavericks. team? We're all taking the Mavericks. Tommy, you've been to a Mavericks game. Describe the feeling. Is Tommy coming with tomorrow night? He is no. not. It'll be my mother. Not. It'll be my mother. I unfortunately I unfortunately have to go to fucking work tomorrow. However, on Halloween he will be joining today. us, Ben. Parking is free, right? Yeah. Good. God, they're gonna make you pay for that? Ew, no. What what the hell do you think this is? The big times? Come on, man. Alright, gentlemen. This is Kansas? Your locks of the week. Um going for Wayville. Okay. Tommy, Tommy going with Louisville as his lock of the week. Mm, ben? I'm going with Duke. He can't because he already picked that game as his lock. What? He has Louisville in that Duke game. Oh. You can't pick that game. Okay. Miami, Ohio. I don't know how anyone has not said this one yet. I'm going with Georgia. Sleeper game of the week. Um, I'll go. Okay. Uh, like I know 
I get it. BYU in Texas. Say that again? I don't know. It's something about that. BYU in Texas. Mm. We'll get to see a young Manning play. Okay, Ben, sleeper game of the week. Quinn Aaron's going to play? No, he's he's out. He, he's out for weeks, Tommy. I mentioned earlier. He injured his shoulder. Um, I will go with. Old Dominion, James Madison. Ooh. Old Dominion has quietly been putting together a good season. They have been. I mean, yes, they are four and three, but their numbers are a lot better than what the record is. I'm going to go with uh, UMass versus Army. I think that one might actually be a good one. All right, gentlemen, read off who you have and your locks and sleeper games of the week. All right, I'll go ahead and start. My wait, 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 say that again. Your your picks. So I have San Diego State. That's not San Diego State. I think. Oh, that's South Dakota State. Sorry, sorry. Um, Idaho. Georgia, Utah, Louisville, Tennessee, UNLV, uh, Georgia Southern, Ohio, Tennessee, Indianapolis, Edmonton, and the Mavericks. My lock of the week is Louisville. And my sleeper game of the week is BYU and Texas. Ben? All right. I have South Dakota State, uh, Montana State, Georgia, Utah, Duke, Tennessee, UNLV, Georgia State, Miami, Ohio, Atlanta, Indianapolis, Edmonton, and Kansas City. Walk of the Week, Miami, Ohio, Sleeper, Old Dominion versus James Madison. I have South Dakota, Montana State, Georgia, Utah, Louisville, Tennessee Volunteers, Fresno State, Georgia State, Ohio, Atlanta Falcons, Indianapolis Colts, Edmonton Oilers, and your Kansas City Mavericks. My lock of the week is Georgia. And my sleeper of the game of the week is UMass versus Army in West Point, New York. May the odds be ever in your favor, gentlemen. Ben, why hasn't the LSU vlog gone up yet? All this weekend was either at the convention or sleeping. Literally. Well, what time do we leave the convention Saturday? Like 7 o'clock? Yeah. And so, me and my little brother didn't get home until like 8 o'clock, and then I got ready for bed and went straight to sleep. My feet were killing me. I needed to sleep. Okay. Uh, I was going to work on it if I got back. I was going to work on it if I got home from work at, at a good time, but I didn't, and so... Yeah. There will be a vlog coming out from me and Ben, along with my mother, who will be making her debut on vlogs for the Mavericks Thunder game this week that we are going to Tuesday. Uh, this should be a lot of fun. The game next week is going to be even better, having all three of us at a Mavericks game together. That's going to be insane. Because Mr. Haley's been there with Jordan. And Jordan was drunk. That was interesting. A drunk Jordan who pre-gamed before the game. <laughs> and then kept drinking at the game. So. This should be good. Oh, it should be a lot of fun. Um, me and Ben will be putting EOS out later this week. Obviously... He's got caught up with some stuff going on this weekend, and I did too. I did not get back to Kansas City on Sunday until 9 at night, so. So, uh, EOS will be recorded at some point here shortly this week. It's going to be a short one, so that helps, anyway. 
Uh, that's all I got, gentlemen. Got I got nothing else. I have our words for the week, Brock. Well, you also have final word for this week, so you can talk about whatever you want in your final word. Because you won all trivia. Right. So. Please take a shower. <laughs> and then... Oh, go, I'll also add... Please use touch grass. Yeah. It's, it's healthy for you. You'll live longer. Touch grass. Um, and to end us off... A single act of carelessness leads to the eternal loss of beauty. There you go. Good night. Have a wonderful rest of your week, everyone. I can be found on Twitter at Brooklyn99. Tommy can be found on Twitter at Dude underscore Rex14. Ben can be found on Twitter at Elite Tiger Score One. You can follow B Card on Twitter at B underscore Card ENT. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Until EOS, or the next Big Time Talkers, or the vlog, and a wonderful rest of your week, everybody.